Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video and today I'm going to be talking about EV batteries. During my last video about EVs here in Ghana, a lot of questions were brought up about the batteries and how that our roads are not good, our roads are not very safe for EVs and all that. And I just kept wondering, so are the roads good for internal combustion engine cars? Because that's another topic altogether. So in this video, I'm going to discuss a few things about the batteries and hopefully you're going to learn a little bit bit more about how EVs actually work and why I think they are very very needed in the African climate. If you've read any of the tabloids recently you might be worried that electric cars are a massive fire hazard and if you buy one you'll be lucky to get to work in the morning without being incinerated. The truth is very different. In fact, recent studies in the US and Sweden have shown that electric cars are around 20 times less likely than petrols or diesels to catch fire. So battery tech has been evolving. Back in the early days when you hear EVs, you always see a lot of EV cars and some of the batteries catching fire, etc, etc. But now the battery technology has just improved and from here on it can only get better. I think some of the companies like BYD currently have the blade batteries which are very efficient and I think if you are going to purchase an EV you should always look out for LFP batteries which stands for lithium ion phosphate batteries. Now these batteries are top notch, they have a long lifespan, they need very little maintenance, they are good for the environment, they perform well under high temperatures which we will talk about a little bit more and they are also safe. These batteries when they are punctured do not explode like normal lithium batteries normally do. They are well engineered and designed that even though they are damaged or punctured they do not just blow up or catch fire. The downside of LFP batteries is that they aren't as energy dense as other types of lithium ion battery. In simple terms that means you often need a physically bigger battery or more cells to achieve the same capacity. In my understanding, I think batteries are just going to get better and better from now on. The range of these batteries are going to improve and also the safety of these batteries are also going to improve. Now, are these batteries useful within the Ghanaian climate? If you've been in Ghana for a while, you realize that it can get very, very hot. What does this heat do to the battery? Very good question. Winter resulted in the shortest range. What was most surprising on the other hand is that we expected to get the best range in mild temperatures because the air conditioning and heating system would have to do less work. But in fact, we got the best range on the hottest day during the summer. What this test helps show is that EV range is not an absolute metric. Weather, hills, climate temperature, cargo, passenger, aerodynamics, not to mention speed and traffic can all have dramatic impacts on your EV's range. We also need to adjust our mindset a little bit for EVs. Unlike a gas car where they're more efficient on the highway and less efficient in stop-and-go city traffic, EVs are the opposite. They're actually less efficient on the highway, as our test shows, and they're more efficient in the city. There are a couple reasons for this. First, an internal combustion engine has a sweet spot where it's most efficient. On the highway, where RPM is low but load is high, the internal combustion engine operates in a more efficient range. Next, internal combustion engines use fuel while idling and are far less efficient during stop-and-go traffic compared to an EV. Lastly, EVs get to take advantage of regenerative braking. This means that during stop-and-go in the city, some of that brake energy, rather than being lost to heat, is being returned to the battery. When you're cruising on the highway with your EV, this advantage is lost. So as an EV owner, even though the battery has its own cooling system and everything in place, there are some basic maintenance that you need to know as an EV owner. Most batteries have a battery monitoring system that gives you a display of the status of the battery if the battery is damaged. Um, they also have cooling systems in place to keep your battery cool. And as an EV owner, you can also help out if you realize that you're on a very hot day. You can decide to park in a shady area so that the battery is not exposed to the direct heat. Also, when the indicators show that the battery is pretty hot, make sure you do not charge it with a fast charger. If you need to charge it and the battery is hot, you can use a normal charger that will just charge the battery at a normal pace without having to charge it fast when it's really heated up like that. And to be honest, EVs work very well in, in this climate. The warmer the climate, the longer you actually get on a range. So a climate like Africa is actually one of the best places where EVs can function based on the research that people have done concerning EVs. You can get the best mileage or you can get the best range on an EV right here in Africa. Isn't that awesome? So 
Yeah. That's nice. nice. You connect your socket mm -hmm. and then you plug the gun. You have to flip the card on it. Okay. Also, if you are driving an EV, make sure you put on the AC. The AC also helps to keep the battery cool even as you are moving. Even though the battery has its own cooling system, the AC also assists it. So, if you are driving in Ghana in the hot weather, put on the AC. That's one of the ways you can keep your battery cool and that way preserve your battery even more. A lot of people have also talked about bumpy roads, that our roads are bumpy and it's going to, you know, displace the car. Personally, I thought it's going to have those kind of effects on the battery, but the battery is built as a very, very solid block. You can't move it, you can't shake it. It takes hours to actually open up an EV battery because they are that well put together. And also think about it, EVs have way less moving parts. A normal internal combustion engine would have about 2000 plus moving parts within the car and the engine etc. But with an EV you can have just about 20 to 30 moving parts depending on how the car is built which makes it less susceptible to damage on bumpy roads because there are less parts. When it also comes to maintenance because the parts are less troubleshooting is much easier you are able to easily spot where the issue is and immediately apply a fix so you don't have to always leave your car with the mechanic throughout days and you come back he fixes one part and another part gets damaged it's much more simple with an ev trust me but talking about evs i believe that africa stands in a very very unique position if we take this thing very seriously africa can become a major producer of ev batteries that's because african countries already represent about 20 percent of global lithium production and you know this is just the tip of the iceberg i'm sure that there are more undiscovered reserves and with the right collaborations africa has the opportunity to not only be a key supplier of raw materials but also lead the world in lithium battery production just imagine for a second that all the African lithium producers come together, produce factories within their countries and are able to produce their own electric vehicle batteries. This would be a major game changer, driving the cost of production way down, using our own materials to create jobs. I really think that we need to shift the narrative. The perception that electric vehicles are too advanced for Africa needs to change. In fact, that is exactly what Africa needs. The leap to electric mobility could be the catalyst for development across the continent. By focusing on production, harnessing our resources, and encouraging innovation within our own borders, Africa can avoid the pitfall of being merely a consumer of foreign technologies. We don't have to wait for external players like Elon Musk to build factories on African soil. We have everything we need to create our own EV and battery manufacturing plants right here using the resources found in our own land. I believe the potential is immense and the time for bold action is now. Africa can indeed become a powerhouse in the EV revolution, improving the quality of life for its people and driving sustainable growth. It's possible and it just begins with bold steps. The possibilities of an EV future are endless, especially in industries like agriculture and logistics. Imagine a scenario where transporting goods like tomatoes from rural areas to urban markets is done at a fraction of the current cost. This will not only improve food security but also reduce food wastage and make markets more accessible to farmers. Furthermore, the idea of electric trucks, large heavy duty vehicles capable of carrying big loads without the frequent breakdowns that plague traditional diesel powered trucks could revolutionize Africa's supply chain. And when you combine this with abundance of solar energy across the continent, you create the potential for practically free sustainable transportation. This isn't just a futuristic dream. It's a feasible reality within reach if we invest in the right infrastructure and mindset. I hope this gave you some insights into EV batteries. Let me know what you think about this and make sure you leave a like, share this with a friend and I really want to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.